Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us this morning for our presentation of Parrot Corporation Selecting Destiny Estimator. Today we have Andy Leak with us. He is the director of VDC for Parrot Corporation out of St. Louis, and he's going to talk about the year evaluation Parrot went through before selecting Destiny Estimator, and then a little bit about the implementation since then. And with that, I'll go ahead and let you get started, Andy. Great. Thanks, Holly. So, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about myself and then we'll kind of jump into here. So, um, I've been with Parrot for about five years now. Um, and as director of EDC, I kind of roll in through several different parts of the company. Um, everything from, from working with BIM and doing coordination to working with pre-con and estimating and then even out to the field where we take this, the information that we create in the design and coordination process and actually apply it in the field. So, I kind of get access to a little bit of everything. Um, which enables me to kind of help lead things in a, in a, in a more interactive way, if you will. Um, so uh, kind of jumping in here are a few bullet points I'm going to kind of nail down here. So, you know, technology is moving at a really rapid pace. And so, you know, as, as we get busier with work and take on more projects and more remote locations, the ability to keep everybody tied together um, becomes somewhat more of a challenge. But with technology, we're, we're able to bridge that gap. And so, as it related to pre-con and estimating, you know, we started to see our workload was steadily increasing. Um, the market, uh, our employment market is, is obviously shifting. Some people were going through retirement and we got new people coming in. And so, we're looking at our tools and trying to evaluate how are we going to keep up with the amount of work we have coming in and training new staff uh, and trying to keep up with that balance. And so, you know, we're going to cover a couple of things here in this webinar, um, and I'm going to try to go through them somewhat quickly so that we can get to questions here at the end. Uh, but the main points are, you know, number one, why change? Um, you know, there has to be a real reason that that sets that into action. Uh, and so we're going to talk a little bit about why change, understanding what the needs are, you know, why, you know, what we were going to try to accomplish by changing our software system uh, or our estimating platform, and then what we used. Uh, to go through and review different options. You know, how do we ultimately get to selecting the platform that we need? Um, and not only the platform, but what we're going to be the final uh, objectives of that, of that process. And then how do we implement it? It's one thing to buy the tool. It's a totally different thing to start implementing it. And so kind of how we approach that. So with that, just to give everyone a little bit of an update or a little bit of an introduction to Peric, um, we're based out of St. Louis. We're a construction management company. Uh, we do self-perform work as well. Um, we work in a variety of contract scenarios from design build, CM at risk, um, pretty much the gamut. Um, we work on a variety of product types um, from healthcare, um, multifamily, commercial, um, pretty much any type of vertical construction. Uh, our revenue in 2016 was around $375 million. Um, We've been very fortunate. I think right now that number is more in the, the low 500 million range. So we're growing rather rapidly right now. Um, we've got uh, offices across St. Louis, Kansas City, uh, Des Moines, Iowa, Cincinnati, Ohio. And so, and, and we've got several field offices across the U.S. So, um, so, you know, we're a privately held company. Um, and the nice thing about that is that we, we are able to focus and grow uh, as nimbly as we need to. Uh, we're, I've been very blessed that our leadership is, is very open to how can we use, utilize technology uh, on a day-to-day -day basis to make us better. And so we are uh, big about staying on the front lines of what's out there and investing in technology. So that's a little bit about us. Um, so let's jump into the heart of the matter here. So why change? Um, the number one reason, to be honest, is you know we were working on a legacy platform. Uh, for us, that was MC Square. Squared. And if you're in the estimating world, you know that, that there's been a lot of change with MC Squared. And so we saw that as a, a, a road that was going to come to an end for us. And so we started researching new tools. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, staffing is another big part of it. You know, we were bringing in a lot of new people to keep up with the new workload. Uh, we have, a, have about 20 people in our pre-con department. And so, you know, dealing with, with moving parts, um, whether they're retiring or moving on for whatever reason and then trying to bring in new staff. You know, we wanted to make sure that we were able to provide them with the best tools to do their job. Um, 
using, using some of the tools that you see on the screen here to do takeoff sometimes can be uh, not as pleasant as using them. So, you know, how can we refine that process? We've found a lot of people spending as much time doing takeoff as they were working on the estimates. So, how can we really start to refine that? And so, you know, nailing down some functionality that we needed uh, that was missing from our, our existing stack for technology for estimating. And then we were also, you know, looking for more development. You know, we had kind of seen MC Squared run its course, and um, it was a it's a fantastic tool for what we were doing, but we weren't getting the development needs that we really uh, were looking for. So we wanted to find a product that was going to be more nimble um, when we needed new improvements that it could react faster. And then ultimately, how could we integrate with the other tools that we're using? You know, Revit's obviously out there. Um, we use Ben360 and other tools. Um, but we wanted to find a way that we could start to tie that data together in a in a more simple way. Um, and I can't say that it is simple. It's certainly not. But we wanted that type of access. So, so that was kind of why change. Um, you know, we've got data coming at us from all different directions, and this is just a, a handful of tools that we're using today. Uh, but there's so much data that we can use from the conceptual phase through the design development phase and then all the way out to the field that can impact how we're tracking uh, our spend on jobs so that we actually can pr provide a budget tracker to our clients and have them really understand what things are happening at any given moment. And so, you know, how do we start to tie all this big data into our system? And so, you know, with other tools that we use, um, you know, the more data we have, the more we can start to go through and do some, some analytic, uh, analytical studies, uh, whether it's predictive or just showing what's happened up to this moment. So we're, we're more in a proactive mode of working on projects as opposed to reactive. And so just around safety and quality, we've seen some huge benefits from that. But also is that those things happen, it allows us to understand how prefab's impacting us and how RFI stats are going up and down. So, you know, We've seen the benefits of data in our past, and so now we're looking at how can we expand on that from estimating. So, you know, with estimating, you got to go through several different stages. You know, there, we start very early in the conceptual stage, and you know, whether we're using a product like Profiler or SketchUp, or more more often than not, we're we're jumping into Revit. You know, very early in projects, and so. How, how are we going to work through that process and be able to bring the quantities and, and the information back into the estimating world so that we can understand uh, at any given moment how far along we are on a budget? So we wanted to be able to develop that more efficiently. And so this was something that as we started to talk with uh, the Beck team, we started to see that they had tools like Profiler um, that also married into Estimator. And so those those became very interesting to us. Um, so moving on to needs and goals. So, you know, we initially wanted to find out, find a way rather that we could pick up and run with, at a minimum, the things that we were already doing. So at a bare minimum, we need to be able to replace our estimating tool and be able to do 2D takeoff, still be able to create a, an estimate and still be able to create reports and uh, an ongoing budget tracking tool. So that so that we had our core uh, requirements satisfied for running projects. That also gave us the ability, as we started to do an integration, to be able to compare notes that from one system to the next, we could get similar results on cost and quantities, and and know that you know we had some confidence in that new system. But that was our core goal for what we call uh, in house. We call that our phase one objective was let's replace what we had from a from an operational perspective. And then we'll look on down the road to how can we start using models and, and other aspects of, of the system to improve our efficiencies. So to do that, we wanted to establish some short-term and long-term goals. You know, 2D estimating, you know, was core to that. Um, and then how how are we going to do that? And we knew that in our system we had, you know, been using for I think 20 over 20 years that, like any database, eventually you're going to start to get some stuff in there that you don't really need or you don't use anymore. So we wanted to be able to go through and review what we had, understand what what we had was really valuable and what we wanted to, to reuse, and then how much of it we wanted to just completely rebuild. I mean, this was an opportunity for us to kind of start fresh. So we looked at it as a really great opportunity to do some house cleaning and, and even find out how are other people doing things. You know, certainly working in a vacuum to a sense, 
you know, you, you kind of look past the opportunities to improve how you do assemblies or, or how you look at your reports. So we were open to seeing new and better ways to doing things. Um, so we kind of took that as, as a core piece of what we we're looking for uh, in that initial search for a new tool. Uh, also, the ability to do more conceptual budgeting and estimating. You know, napkin sketch estimates sometimes are what can win you a job. So the ability to have a tool that was more nimble and we could get some really rough numbers early was something that we really wanted to, to zero in on. And then eventually, and I've got my cat on here, but you know, the phrase was, we want to use some BIM models. Uh, so how can we start using some new tools, uh, you know, specifically models that are coming from the world of, of Revit and, and other tools like that, that we can start getting quantities without having to do all the manual takeoff. Um, so beyond that, it was kind of an internal training also to start allowing everyone to understand at a very basic level the advantage of going to an integrated approach where we're sharing data from all these different platforms as opposed to getting just 2D drawings or PDFs and having to import that data and manually take it all off. So, you know, there was a certain amount of internal education we had to do about, you know, what what does all this terminology mean? Where What are the limitations of, of getting a model? And, you know, is it accuracy? What level of detail does it have? Um, all those kinds of things that go into really leveraging them. Um, and then, uh, you know, as it, as it related to, to our needs and goals, you know, we're going to have to develop a rollout plan. So we really understood how much time it was going to take from people's day-to-day -day work or, you know, to be doing full-time estimating and then also want to be able to train on a new system, do a pilot project, help set standards and review assemblies and reports. It's a big time commitment, um, you know, and not only that, looking at our hardware where we're going to have to improve uh, some of the laptops and desktops that we had in-house. So, you know, those were all things we had to take into consideration. It wasn't just the cost and the time commitment for developing the platform. It's how are we going to get everybody to start using it? Um, so, you know, that set us on a path of finding out who was out in the market with a viable solution. And we looked at, uh, I can loosely say we, we looked at almost a dozen platforms. We really narrowed it down to about a half a dozen. Um, and so in doing that, we had several different vendors come in with their software and do full demonstrations. They'd spend a day or two with us and show us um, all the functionalities that it had, uh, how it how it created reports or how you could modify line items and how you could add uh, fees and change things on the fly. I mean, it was really, you know, we really want to understand in a real world, you know, aside from all the marketing stuff that's out there, how does the tool really work? And that was a very challenging thing to get enough of our, our lead uh, estimators in a, in a room, you know, for three or four hours at a time to really be able to stop what they were doing at the outside world and focus in on a software platform that was you know, new to them to see and understand its functionality and, and try to have some relation to how they were doing it in, in our current platform and how that would work in this new tool. So there was a little bit of a, uh, a ramp up to get to where we could do that. And what we ultimately did was create a uh, scorecard of what were some some real base functions we absolutely had to have and some workflows or processes that we had to be able to replicate in some form and give it some sort of a score and so here in the bottom right assuming everyone can see my screen okay um, you know we came up with a basic scorecard system and you know this is just one snippet of this report um, i think it was about i don't know six or seven uh letterhead pages long so that there was enough things around basic estimating and quantity takeoff and versioning and, and all the other things we were looking for. And so up here in the top right, you can kind of see our scorecard summary. And, and I, I didn't put our scores on here because I, I didn't feel those are somewhat um, indicative of the way that we looked at it. Um, one with The way we scored it may be different than the way another company would score it based on their experience. So, but these basic, what is it, about 10 different categories were the main things we looked at in scoring the system. Um, and, and so this was kind of a base point for us to look at all, at about a half a dozen platforms and say, which one has the most functionality and is gonna be the, the ultimate solution or be able to be a flexible solution that's gonna get us down the road. Now, not on here was also the working relationship that we were gonna have with whoever we selected. We wanted to make sure that we were going to have great support 
be able to pick up a, a phone and call them and get a response immediately. Um, estimating is absolutely core to everything we do. Um, number crunching in, in our industry is something that we had had to be able, have to be able to depend on on a day to day basis. And so, you know, that relationship and how we would roll out this platform and and ultimately rebuild it was something we absolutely were zeroing in on from the very get go. And so as we kind of went through this process of reviewing different tools, um, you know, we had set up some initial goals. We ended up redefining those goals as we went along and found out about new and, and better functionality and workflows and, and things that you know, were either slightly different or completely different from what we were used to. Uh, and we expressed to all the different people we talked to about, you know, some of our big goals around having an integrated platform, um, having the ability to, to utilize BIM, uh, in, in our long-term planning. Um, key to that, and you know, this is where the cell internally became even probably just as important as, as selecting someone from the outside was getting buy-in from our, our pre-con team. You know, it's change is always hard. The perception of change, um, it has different effects on different people. Some, some people run towards change. They love new and innovative things. Other people are, are completely satisfied with uh, being able to do the thing they do very well every day and be able to focus on the project and not having to change their world. So, you know, dealing with uh, or coming up with a way that we could we could zero in on the, the benefits of reduced time on quantity takeoff, improved reporting, those kind of things were what we zeroed in as uh, ways to get buy-in from the team and help them be a part of the selection process. We ultimately voted um, amongst the key players in our, in our estimating group on which platform they felt was most suitable and which team was going to be the most supportive. And so it literally came down to a roundtable vote, uh, which was, I can say with confidence, was basically unanimous. Um, that we went the Beck route. Um, and that really goes to uh, the credit of the Beck team and, and how they presented the product. Um, they flew up and sat with us on a handful of days and walked through different parts of the tool and uh, we're very good to work with early on in the process. So that was, you know, a really awesome thing to go through. And our, you know, our hats are off to them for spending the time and having the patience to work, work through that with us. Um, and then as you get into the details of stuff, you know, ultimately we had to look at how's the licensing and the cost of the product going to work. Um, you know, this isn't a tool that you buy and every year you re-examine it. It's, a, it's always a long-term uh, purchase. So we weren't looking at a one or two year thing we're looking at a, a, a longer term purchase so we wanted to make sure that whoever we ultimately selected was going to be a good fit in the long haul not just for the next year or two um, and as I mentioned earlier and I don't need to read slides but um, you know I can't drill in enough on how much the support is important and how much the ability to to develop the product as the market's changing and we get new and better tools every day as it relates to all kinds of stuff um, from drones and laser scanners to to improvements just even in Revit or tools like that. So, so you know, as we as we went through the process, um, and as I said, we 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 were able to narrow down to Beck as a really awesome platform that we thought had all the potential we needed. Um, and I can say it didn't have everything we wanted all at once. Um, but we talked about the roadmap of development for the product and, and what tools and features were coming. Uh, we we understood going in that they were still early in the market, um, but their team is very enthusiastic um, and they were able to show us proof of development that was going on. And so that gave us some confidence. We reached out to, to peers that we knew were using the platform and were able to get some feedback from them about how their experience was going. Um, and you know, we, we have been aware of Deprofiler for what the better part of 10 years. And so we'd seen that tool and knew what it was capable of. And you know, the overall spirit of the platform really kind of meshed well culturally with where Peric is. Um, and you know, we do not have a fear of technology, and we understand that change is inevitable. So we we were very happy to to look at that as an opportunity to have input on the product's development. And so I think that's really worked out uh, well for us so far. And we've seen a lot of changes in the product just in the time that we've been working on our own implementation. And so. Once we officially selected the product, um, we had Beck fly their team up um, so we could do face-to-face -face introductions. Um, we met with everyone from um, Stuart and Mike, who are you know the, the overarching leadership of the team. 
and down to, to Brent and a few others who really help work with us on day-to-day -day, um, development of our, our new database. And so we did a formal kickoff meeting. We spent about a day um, with uh, our estimating team leadership, um, some members of our VDC team who support a lot of this, and even our IT staff. And then we walked through with Precon, you know, how are we going to go about uh, cleaning up our database? You know, how is that going to be able to transfer that data into the new system? And we've worked out, you know, the an, an ultimate milestone schedule of how we're going to go through this process. And I think we started officially back in August, September timeframe. Um, and we went about exporting out all the content that we had, um, walking them through how it was set up, how it worked, line by line, assembly by assembly, report by report. It was literally, you know, every single item had to be addressed. And so this is a... Uh, certainly a time-consuming process. We were able to dedicate a couple of, of resources between VDC and Precon to really focus in on this effort. And so once we had the milestone schedule set up, we set up weekly calls um, and we would do a weekly catch-up on kind of where we were. But there were numerous phone calls and numerous emails throughout the week to, to share data, talk about the way things were working, um, identify where we were going to have some stumbling blocks to have to work through. And then even identify things that we hadn't considered before that, that needed to be figured out. Um, how we were dealing with certain uh, assembly types was uh, particularly drywall. I know we picked on drywall quite a bit. Uh, we, we really wanted to make the best of the, of the system. So how do we go about reassessing the way we do things? Um, and we took guidance from Beck and our peers to figure out better ways to do that. Um, and so that led us down the path, path of doing a rebuild on our database. And uh, we initially thought that we would probably be through that in a few months. Um, but as we really drove in and started to understand all the different aspects of our company and who all was tying into the SBank platform, there's just more and more out there. And so uh, we ended up extending our development time. Um, and that was something that we all agreed upon that was necessary. So we dug in and spent the time to do that. And, uh, towards the, with the end of the first quarter of this year, we started doing some pilot projects to start seeing the, the fruits of our labor to make sure that the assemblies and the light items that we created, the reports that we had created, were going to meet our needs for a fully functional system in production environment. And so that's where we've spent a lot of time here recently is understanding what are the, what are the things that we haven't gotten quite perfected yet and, you know, how are we going to best implement this? So we, we identified a, a core team of people to do the pilot projects and to help with um, reviewing assemblies and line items, and that was about six people, including myself. And we would literally go through and test on a weekly basis all of the assemblies, all the line items, um, how we were figuring our, our rates, um, how, you know, productivity rates, cost rates, everything. And so as we got through that process, and you know, we're starting to come to the end of that now, and so that's where this, this particular webinar is interesting because this is kind of a, a step in time for us in our process of implementing a new estimating platform. We were able to select and, and identify not only a, a product and a team, but also a plan for implementing it. So as, we, as we're starting to get to what we feel is the end of a, a full phase one, we're going to start doing our next step, which is training the rest of the staff. And so, as I mentioned earlier, we have about 20 people in that staff that are going to have to be able to transition out of day-to-day -day work uh, and spend anywhere from uh, a day or maybe two to three days in a week focusing on the new system on a pilot project. Um, and I think that the way that we're going to approach our, our early projects is to do projects side-by-side -side in our new system and our old system. Um, but very quickly phase out of that and just get focused on doing uh, new projects in the new system. And so that's kind of where we're at today. Um, hopefully this has been somewhat insightful. I know that we've got a conference coming up in Houston uh, here in a few weeks at the Estimating Technology Conference, and we're going to have an expanded conversation around this, but I think this this hopefully is, is somewhat insightful into the very early steps of selecting a new tool and, and this, Again, this isn't everybody's way. This is the way that we approached it. But I think that grassroots ap uh, approach of having input from the entire team, seeing other systems, understanding you know, the benefits of, of evolving to a new tool, 
um, really helped us get buy-in from the entire team so that when we get implemented, everybody's felt like they've been a part of that process. And ultimately, we have a good partner in, in doing this. So uh, with that, Holly, thank you. I'll take questions or whatever you'd like for me to do over here. Sounds great. Thank you, Andy. Um, please feel free to enter your questions in the dialog box, and we will get to them. I do have one question here. Did you receive a change order when you hit delays or found things that were not in the plan? If we're talking about change orders in the, in the process of implementing the tool? Yes. That's one way I think. I, I, okay, so, uh, so the way they reacted to things that we hadn't anticipated, it was, again, we went back to the group and identified what was going to be the best way to add either the functionality or the, or the line items in the database that we didn't have. And so that always went to a small committee of, of people to help determine what was going to be best for our company and our, our project types so that the system uh, had, had continuity um, from one product type to the next. Okay, and then could you give an example of a technology problem that Parrot hit that um, Beck Tech addressed um, in a timely fashion? Sure. Um, so we found a couple different things that, that we had to deal with. Um, one, uh, a simple one, was around Windows 10. Um, we, a lot of our staff now use uh, Surface uh, tablets, and we were having uh, an issue with just a video driver that it pained us for probably three months before we finally figured out what the actual problem was. But as soon as that was identified and um, uh, we were able to come up with a solution to it, um, the Beck team helped us very quickly get that resolved. Another thing that I know was a, a big thing uh, was the size of our database. Um, it was uh, much larger than, than what everyone was expecting to see. And so as we dug in, there was a need to have a larger capacity of database. And that was something that the Beck team jumped on very quickly. They identified it as an issue that needed to be resolved, uh, not only for, for Parix development, but for, for other clients. And so that was something they responded to very quickly. Um, and that, that was something that we found to be a, a great benefit. I know there was something else around how we dealt with um, bonds and TIFFs and that kind of stuff. And they very quickly created a, uh, a mock-up of a, of a module that would help us deal with those kinds of things uh, and implemented it in the platform. I, we're getting ready to roll this out on another project right now on, and that kind of functionality is core to, to our projects. Excellent. And then whenever you, we talked about the changes in the first question, did it cost more, you know, when there were changes to the implementation plan? No. Um, that, that has been one of the great things about working with Beck and I, you know, to, to the team's credit, I think everybody knew going in what the spirit of the project was going to be and that there was going to be unknowns that, that nor, neither Peric nor Beck technology were aware were going to be out there. Um, we worked together to identify uh, an implementation plan and, and the associated cost to do that. And when the when these new things popped up, um, you know, I, I did really take my hat off to Beck Technology for uh, digging in and just getting it done. I, they have never hit us uh, with a, a cost for change order or anything like that. Um, and that that really just goes to their credit of understanding that those kind of things are coming up. They're, they're developing a tool that's that's new in the industry and and they were going to get a benefit out of it just as we were. And I, I think that it ultimately played out in, in everyone's favor that, yeah, we're, there was more time spent on development than originally expect, expected, but um, it's a win for both teams. So I, I think the spirit of the team working together has, from that aspect, been absolutely fantastic. Great, thank you for clarifying. And then we have a question coming in. Are you developing Revit models in-house or using a model from outside architects? Uh, we do both. Um, in the early conceptual phases of a project, um, just to get a project off center and, and help a client understand kind of what, what dollars are associated with what type of a product, we can do a very quick conceptual design just to kind of show what a building might look like on a potential site. And then as we roll into the project into true 
true design development and a architect is selected, um, we very quickly get out of the way with, with the models we've created, um, let them come up with their own uh, uh, product or their own building design, and we come back to that model. And, and the flexibility that the VEX system allows is that uh, it's somewhat agnostic to the models, uh, the way that the models are structured. Every architect seems to have their models structured slightly different. A wall type in one system to the next is always different. And so um, we haven't looked at that as a barrier in any way. And again, you know, our point of working with teams is we try to be collaborative. So we work with a variety of architects um, and the, you know, the models that we get from them are, are at various stages of development when we start. And that's something that we have to keep our eyes open for so that we understand the level of development and how that's going to impact our estimates. Okay. Is Destiny best used for design build or hard bid projects? And do you all do any hard bid? Could you talk to where you find it best used for? Um, so we do both or, or all, I, I guess I could say. Um, so we again, we are very early on in our adoption of the new platform. So I, I can't say, you know, with 100% clarity that it works better with one contract type over another. Um, what I can say is that the way that the, the platform is structured is it's pretty agnostic to contract type, model type, data type. Um, you know, it, it, we structured it, structured the data and the assemblies so that from the way that Peric approaches a project, the way that we cost a wall assembly or a floor assembly, um, we're looking at the same basic pieces of information and we're going to enter them in and see what our numbers are going to be and then we're going to go to the market and get bids and insert uh, what the market says. So we, you know, we've, that's been our, our approach on it so far. And again, we're very early on in our adoption, so we're, we're not 100% rolled out on all jobs yet. Uh, so we'll probably have more uh, more information and a better answer on that here in the months to come. Okay. And then as far as the database, were all the estimators sharing one prior to importing or were they all on individual databases? Uh, on our on our legacy system we had a had a, a single database that everybody tagged on to. Um, in our in our development of uh, the estimator tool from Beck Technology, uh, we had one database that we were all working from, we were making copies from, but everyone was working independently to test it on their own uh, their own laptops. But again, that's a part of the development process. Now that we're rolling it out, we're back to a, a single database uh, structure where we will go and we will download a local copy of it and work from it that way. Okay, perfect. Well, I think that's about all the questions we have. Um, with that, I want to thank Andy for presenting and thank you all for attending. And um, please feel free to reach out via email if you do have any other questions that come up from this presentation. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Holly. Bye-bye.